Now we're going to add our mask with color selection. We're going to pick the color. that chocolate wood I want it to be on that interior section and on these um, lines on either side now I don't like the height information there so I'm going to go into my wood texture that chocolate I'm going to turn off the height Also going to again still pull back a bit on the um, normal intensity and also on the shininess there. Okay, just going to double check my um my ID map here. Okay, I want to change the wood color here for the um the circle, the inner circle. Just going to choose what I want to put there. Uh, what have we got here that might be interesting? Let's see what this metallic gold paint will look like. Because remember it's easy for us to remove a layer if we don't like what we've, what we've done. Again, we're going to uh, add mask with color selection and we're going to pick that color. Let's play with our um, values here. I'm going to pull back on our height position a bit. I'm also going to pull back on the normal intensity a bit as well. Let's try playing with our, um, our, our tiling values too. Now I have to decide whether I like the gold. Basically what this looks like it is, it's painted the wood with a gold like leaf or something. Don't know that I'm really wrapped with that or not. Like I may have forgotten. Uh, there should be another box in through here. I'm just going to jump back into Max quickly. I see. You see, the problem here is I've forgotten to attach that box to the rest of the object. That's okay. What we can do is I'm going to select that. I'm going to attach that box that I forgot to attach before. Reassign the material. Re-export the model. back into substance and I'm going to um, reload that model again. We may mess up our texture assignment here, we'll find out. Okay. 
seem to like that. Yeah, let me just um, let's save this project so I don't have to uh, jump back again. in place it was uh, I, I forgot to attach that second box to the rest of it that's the reason it didn't pull it in that's okay thankfully with substance we didn't do any painting by hand so it's really not too big a deal again we're going to remove the second layer And we're going to turn off our hide information. Pull back on our roughness a bit. And pull back on our height range and our normal. Okay, now let's throw down our American cherry wood. Again, we're going to pull back on the height, make it a little bit less shiny. Okay, now let's pull in our beechwood chocolate. Again, I'm going to turn the height information off. I'm going to mask, mask with color selection. Looks like what it's done here is when I've um, what I what I've done is I've added another piece of geometry without adding a new render to texture. So I'm just going to move this piece of geometry over. What I need to do is, because I've added a new piece of geometry, I have to um, do another render to texture to get the correct material ID map. Also going to double check that we didn't unwrap on that. I don't know if we did. No, we didn't. Okay. So again, we're going to scale it down. I'm just going to move it off. Yeah. 
And we have our UVs here. Okay. Just got to make sure I do a flatten mapping here. Because again, we can't have our UVs overlapping. So I'm sure I did that, didn't I? Gonna collapse my stack. <laughs> All right. What I'm gonna do is um, go out of shaded mode. I'm in sub-object mode. I'm just going to make sure I select these um, pieces again. So what Max has done is assign the same material to everything and it should not. So I'm just going to reassign the color to some of these pieces. Uh, that one. That one. That one. I'm just deciding how many material IDs I want. Um, we can assign material IDs even if we don't use them, so that's all right. We may as well break it up a bit more. One, two, three. All right, we have four there. That should be good. All right, let's try it again. I'm just going to go out of um, edge faces here. We're going to export our model again. Sorry about that guys, that was my fault. I forgot to attach a piece of geometry. Uh, actually before we export. Let's also make sure that those new UVs we just added are um, in the right spot. And they're not. They're over here. So we've got to move them in. Pop them in here. Okay. Now we should be good. Collapse that stack. Export our model. Let's see if we can replace the model or not. Ah, we also must make sure that we render out our texture again. So, render to texture. Everything's still okay. We'll just make sure we add a diffuse map. Set our size. Set our export path. Render. Continue. Override. There we go. We have our new UVs rendered in there. Now, if I left it like this and I brought this model into Substance, what, what we're going to do is, what, what will happen is we're going to get a multi-material. Now, we don't want that. We, we don't want multiple textures uh, in different materials. So what we're going to have to do again is make another copy, this with the Shift key, assign the same texture to everything, and re-export. And again, that's so that we end up with one material and not multiple materials. So. Just for draw calls. 
Yeah, I hope I'm not making this confusing for you guys. I know I've done this a couple of times now. That was my fault. I forgot to add a piece of the geometry. So let's start from the beginning here. We're selecting our wooden box, which has one material. We are adding the render to texture that we just did in Max to create our new project. Okay, so now we have the box that I forgot to include last time there. We've got one texture, not multiple textures. Whereas if we left everything, if we left that multi-material assigned, we'd have multiple textures here. We don't want that because that'll create a, a multi, that'll, that'll uh, increase the draw calls on the object in the game engine. We want to select our ID map. Okay, now we're going to start with this wood beach honey, which is the underlying light color for the wood. I'm just going to throw that down. I'm turning off the height information because I don't want it to be so bumpy. I'm removing this first layer because that's just a uh, default layer created by Substance when we create a new project. Okay, now I want to um, just pull up on the roughness so it's not quite so shiny. <laughs> Sniper Echo says it's good to see some mistakes. A lot of times it reinforces what not to make. That mistake in the first place. Well, that's, that's true. That's just me not concentrating properly on what I'm doing. And meaning that I just forgot to add that little box there, that, that second square box behind the, uh, the circle. If I hadn't forgotten that, it wouldn't have been a problem. But because I forgot that, that meant I had to re-UV map and then re-export. That's where we are now. It's okay to make mistakes. I'm just pulling back on the normal intensity as well. That's how you learn. Like Sniper Echo says, it reinforces what not to do <laughs> and how not to do. Let's throw on our cherry wood here. That's our main texture, color. Uh, again, I'm going to pull back on the height information again. I'm going to pull back on the um, normal intensity and I'm going to pull up on the roughness so it's not quite so shiny. Still a little shiny, so it looks like we have a bit of a varnish, but not, not too much. Okay, now. <laughs> now we're going to add our chocolate wood. Again, we're going to turn off the hide information. Now we're going to add mask with color selection. Pick the color, and we're picking that purpley color there to make that the chocolate part of the wood. Okay, now let's go back to our gold paint, or metallic paint they're calling it. Let's throw that at the top of the stack. Uh, again we're going to add mask with color selection, pick the color and we're going to choose that circle. I'm going to uh, just change my scaling of my UVs here to one and one. So basically it looks like the wood has been painted with like a gold paint. Now I have to decide whether I want to make that square in the background, which was the whole reason I brought it, I, I realized that it wasn't there. A different, um, a different material, a different color wood perhaps. And I think um, it might look good as maybe the chocolate brown again. Let's see what else we've got to play with though. Da, 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 da. Now, it, it, it didn't even have to be wood. We could make it a marble if we wanted to. It could be like a marble inset behind, a marble panel inset into the wood. I don't actually want to do that for what we're doing. Um, I think that's getting a bit too grand for the building we're putting it in. If you were doing like a large mansion or something, it probably would be more appropriate. But for that deco building, I don't think we'd really have marble inlay. But you could put marble there. I think we'll stick to probably a wood. I'm just looking through my materials here to see which what might look good. And you probably want to try and avoid mixing and matching too many materials in one object, uh, particularly like this. It'll just start to look a bit odd if you if you're starting to use ten different wood, different types of wood in one object. Uh, having said that, let's. Um,
Let's throw down. I think we might go back to this this chocolate coloured wood. Again, I'm going to turn off the hide information. I'm going to add a mask with color selection. I'm going to pick. Oh, okay. I thought it actually added um, that back piece as a separate material ID, but it's not. Let's see what the dark wood looks like though on the uh, the actual tube, the, the cone, the cylinder. All right. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go into my cherry wood. It's not red enough for me. I'm going to change my color. Because remember, we when we made the banisters, we altered the color a little bit. I'm just going to pull it into the red just a little bit more. That looks good. Just to better match the uh, banister top and bottom. And we can change it once when we export it back into Max. If it doesn't look right, we can always come back in here and change it a bit. Now, I'm just also going to look at the um, the rotation. I'm going to play with that a bit. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and see what that looks like. No, I don't like that. So I'm going to get back to zero. I prefer the wood to be running this way as opposed to this way. Now I'm going to go into that chocolate brown wood and I'm also going to look at the color of that. And I think I'm just pulling it up a bit. I just don't want it to be quite so dark. I'm going to do that on these side pieces. I don't know if you can see the difference between that brown there and the brown there now. Uh, and I'm also going to do it to... This is, this is the chocolate that runs around that edge. So I'm going to look at the color of that. I may pull that one down to make it darker. Like that. So we have our darker chocolate wood ring, and then we have our slightly lighter chocolate wood borders and background here. I'm going to jump back into the cherry wood and just have a look at our scaling as well. Our tiling, I should say. They call it UV scale, but what it really is is more of UV tile. Um, let's get a floor. Maybe a bit more. This is quite a small piece of, of, of object as, in relation to the rest of those stairs. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm scaling up the texture, the wood texture. So because it, it, as far as geometry goes, it's quite a small object. It would only be about maybe about that wide as far as the actual um, piece in relation to that, those railings goes. So I don't want to scale the texture, to, uh, tile the texture too much. Uh, it, it should, the wood grain should be quite large on it, not, not too tight. And you see we still only have one, one material here to export, but we have multiple materials assigned to the object. And that's what this multi material ID is really good for. Without the material ID, we would have like five different materials, which when we brought it into Unreal, would, would create five draw calls on one object, which is what would slow down the engine. So doing it this way with one material, one draw call, will make sure that it does, this piece of geometry doesn't slow the engine down. So let's uh, export that texture. Make sure we're in the right uh, folder.
uh, again, if there's any, if you have any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into your chat. I know I've redone this about three times here, and I, I don't want to confuse you guys. So if you're not sure about anything, please feel free to ask me in chat. Uh, wooden corner box. That's the folder. We'll save it as a 2K texture because again, go too big. Better, better going too large than too small. We can always shrink it down in Photoshop later. It's exported. We're exporting it as a PNG. Okay. Let's save uh, our um, project as well. So that we can come back to it if we want to, if we need to. Okay, let's jump back into Max. And let's uh, load up that texture we just exported from Substance. So I'm going to throw down a standard texture in a bitmap. wooden corner box, that's the colour texture we want. Make sure we show shaded and show realistic so we can see it in the viewport. Let's assign the material to that selection now. Alright. I'm just going to call this uh, wooden corner box old. I'm going to call this one wooden corner box. Right. Let's um, exit isolation mode. I've got my box selected. I'm going to select the um, old boxes here and hold down the control key to select both of them. I'm going to go back into isolation mode. So let's select our newly textured box and uh, let's move it into place. I'm just going to jump into my top viewport to make this a bit easier. And make sure it's lined up correctly in my side viewport. And it's fine. Okay, hold down my shift key and shift drag a copy out. I'm going to have to rotate this one in the other direction. Move that one into play. Looks like my angle's a little bit off. And we'll do the same thing again, shift drag a copy and rotate it around. Shift drag copy. Do our rotation and move it into place. All right, I'm just going to jump into my orthographic viewport here really quickly. And it's all right. Now I'm going to select the old four pieces and I'm going to delete them. Now I'm going to jump out of isolation mode and we can look at our model piece here. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to select everything and jump back into isolation mode so that we're not distracted by everything else. Now remembering we're going to be putting that wrought iron pieces in by in, inside the Unreal Engine. That way we only have to use one piece and we can just instance it, copy it around. Again, that'll save on our polygons. Um, what I'm more interested in here is that looking at the, um, the color and now I can see that uh, the red color here is incorrect. It needs to be uh, darker. 
and redder. So let's jump back into um, substance, back to our cherry wood. Let's make sure that we pull back on the um, Make, make it a little redder and then there's a value here where are we? The luminosity I'm going to pull back on the luminosity a little bit and I'm going to re-export that uh, texture again back in the max I'm going to make sure that um, <clears throat> Max has reloaded that texture. And again, <coughs> pardon me. I think maybe the luminosity is correct, but I think I may make it just a little bit redder. Red up. <clears throat> so. Let's try that. Back into Max, and that's better. I just wanted a better color match between uh, that wood and these side wooden pieces here. Um, now, what I have forgotten to do though is I do want to do some uh, a little bit of wearing on it. So, <clears throat> quickly going to jump back into substance. We added our wood beach color here, honey, as our underlying layer. <clears throat> Pardon me, guys. I'm going to add a white mask <clears throat> on our cherry wood jump into my brushes and pick uh, you. Now I don't want to get nuts with the wearing here because you're not going to get really much wearing um, because it's on the inside of that um, cutout inside of the ceiling so you're not, you're not going to get people knocking it too much but a little bit of wearing might look okay. Let's uh, pull back on our brush size quite a bit. Now again, I've got that uh, height information happening, which shouldn't be. I'm just going to jump in here and make sure my height value is uh, turned off. Okay. And uh, I want to use this brush. The brush was not quite right either. And again, I'm just going to start just marking it up here and there. I'm not really going to concentrate on any of the back section because again this is all being hidden under the floor. I'm really only worrying about the front. And just, just putting a few marks here and there on the wood to make it look like it's been, um, you know, it's just scuffed up, marked up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here along this uh, inner edge for this box. Reduce my brush a little. It's mainly on the corners. A little bit through the sides. Again, just a bit down here near this corner. here on this corner. This is just, just breaking it up a little bit, even though like I said you're not really going to get a lot of wearing happening. Just giving it a bit more interest 
as opposed to being such a clean looking piece of um, wood. I think we'll just help add a bit more um, realism to that piece. You know what I mean? It just, just makes it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit older. Uh, we can do the same thing on um, on these pieces of wood, but I think I may concentrate a bit more here with it on the uh, circle. Oh, actually no, we, we won't do that. We'll, we'll leave the the wearing just to the main parts of the wood. Um, we can add a generator though. Let's try that. Let's add a dirt generator. Let's play with our values here again. Now I'm just pulling back on it just until I get enough wearing happening that I think it looks okay. Just using my dirt level. I'm pulling up on the dirt contrast a bit just to make it a little bit less worn. Okay, that should be okay for what we want. We've just got a bit of wearing happening here and there. Just to give the wood a bit of an aged look. Let's re-export our texture. Save our project. Jump back into Max. Make sure Max has reloaded the correct texture again. And now we have just, just a bit of wearing happening on our wood. And I think uh, we're almost done. The only other thing I want to do, uh, which I won't do today, we'll do tomorrow is I want to remove this panelling from the in inner sections on this side and this side. I want to leave that decorative inlay just on the outside corners. So I, I don't want these railings to be, um, to be, but I want them to go against a plain piece of wood, not against that pattern, because it looks weird. So tomorrow what we'll do is we'll leave the pattern here on the, on the outside, but we'll remove it from the inside. Uh, once we've done that, I think our, uh, railings here are pretty much done. I, I do actually want to add a bit more detailing on these uh, metal sections as well. So we'll do that tomorrow. And then we can import this into the Unreal Engine and this piece of geometry is done. I think we may leave it there though today guys. Um, we've got this piece just about finished. So we can bring it into Unreal tomorrow once we make those a couple of small changes. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and for watching and thank you guys too that uh, popped into chat and showed me your work. Uh, I really do like looking at the stuff you guys are doing. Um, and like I said, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and for watching the stream. Um, remember, if you're not sure when I'm going to be live, you can keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoesDoes3D. I always post 15 minutes before I go live to Twitter. And my schedule does not change though. I'll be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States which is 11am uh, in Australia and which is back to 1am in the UK. Um, so I will be back on again tomorrow. Thank you again for hanging out and for watching. You're quite welcome, um, Sniper Echo, and I'm uh, welcome to the advice as well. Uh, but it's looking great, Sniper Echo. Just a couple of those small changes. And it's looking really good. Um, I'll be back on again tomorrow though, guys. Uh, thank you again for hanging out and for watching. Um, Hope you guys have a good night and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys. <laughs>